Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us enter into the Word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, do you recall the person or persons who taught you how to pray? Well, maybe for some of us, it was our parents. For others, it could have been our family members. And maybe for some of us, it would have been church friends or community friends who taught us, guided us on how to pray. Well, in today's Gospel reading taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray. And this must have been a great revelation to his disciples because Jesus teaches them to address God as Father. This must have been so new, revolutionary to the disciples to address God as Father. Now think of it, you know, as we think about the disciples during that time, they didn't see that God was someone who desired a relationship with them. And when Jesus taught them to address God as Father, He was inviting them into this union, into this close, personal relationship. And that is what prayer is, my dear brothers and sisters. That as we draw closer to God, we build this relationship with God through prayer, through conversation, through turning our hearts to Him. Now let me just share two other points about prayer for us to think about. And I have learned these two things you know, throughout my life, even though short here on earth, which has helped me to have a better appreciation about prayer. Now the first being that God doesn't need my prayers. God doesn't need your prayers because our prayers doesn't change who God is. God will remain God the same today, yesterday and forevermore. But what prayer does is that prayer changes the one who prays. And when I heard this, it made so much of sense because God is not someone who feeds on ego whatsoever. But the moment I begin to humble myself and pray, that's when change happens in my life. That is when the gospel says I'm able to forgive those who have sinned against me. Prayer changes the one who prays. Number two, I remember having a conversation with a brother who is so inspiring. Despite his uh, very busy schedule, like, you know, I asked this brother, how do you, um, you know, manage everything? How are you able to ensure that you, you know, have time for community, for your family, you know, for your friends, for work, so on and so forth? And he said, Chris, it's very important to protect certain things in my schedule daily. And the first thing that I need to protect is my prayer time. And this brother was teaching me that prayer was a non-negotiable in his life. That from his prayer time that he dedicated, the time that he dedicated to pray and intercede to listen to the Lord, that prayer time gave him the strength and the grace to carry out all his responsibilities in his family, in his workplace, in his community. And he remembered that so clearly and evidently and I've tried my best to put first things first that prayer is a priority and it should come first in my daily life so my dear brothers and sisters I invite you to go deeper into your prayer life right if you are someone who doesn't have a consistent prayer time I just invite you to set aside time the same time you know throughout um, the days to dedicate that time to, to the Lord. For those who, of us who have a consistent prayer time, I just want to invite you to go deeper um, you know, in your relationship, in your prayer life. May the Lord's name be praised. Thank you.